Hello and welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial review. This time we're going to be taking a look at Magic Bullet Mojo. Now this is the second Magic Bullet Suite application we're taking a look at and how about we just jump straight in. Now once you've installed the Magic Bullet Suite or just Magic Bullet Mojo then it's going to live in your effects with all your other effects and if we scroll down here you can see there's a Magic Bullet Suite uh, section and here we find Mojo. Now this is actually Mojo 2 which is a brand new version of Mojo which has been rebuilt from scratch and runs way faster on GPUs across Windows and Mac which is fantastic and essentially what Mojo is is that it's a very fast and efficient Hollywood cinematic film look platform or plugin rather. Now you, there's lots of sliders and it's one of those plugins that actually you just want to kind of play around with each slider to try and get the kind of look you're looking for but what the sliders do is it's hard to understand in a way in and, and you will see that as we go along now the first slider is the main slider and that is basically how much mojo is your shot going to have at the moment it's got a little bit of mojo but if we go all the way then it's going to look intense and then there's just so much mojo we kind of lose the image and kill it a bit so I wouldn't actually push the mojo up too high but obviously it depends what you're going for the important thing to remember is that tools are designed to be used in whichever way you want them to so if you're creating a really uh, high contrast very vivid uh, commercial for example or music video then it's going to be really useful but for the most part if you're just trying to grade your film then too much mojo uh, is going to be much anything higher than about 70 or so but we're going to give it about you know 40 50 mojo and then we've got the tint now the tint basically lets us uh, swing it between a few different colors on the color spectrum and then we can use the balance tool to try and rebalance it back out so we still get a nice image you can, i think especially because i'm trying to create a moody scene this area around the 79 mark blues uh, are popping out more in the shot giving it a moodier tint but we haven't lost some of the warmer colors in the background so we've still got the actual real life tones of the brick wall which is fantastic and then after that we can warm it now even though it says warm it this is actually just a heat slider or a temperature slider and what I mean by that is if we move it backwards and go into the negatives then we can make this shot very blue and then obviously if we go forward on the warm it slider then it's going to make the shot really warm. I'm just going to go back a little bit just to give it a bit more of a blue tint but making sure that we haven't lost some of the brick tones and if we did then remember we can just go back to the balance tool and rebalance out the shot a little bit. The balance tool is really good to kind of counteract some of the extreme changes that you're making in the rest of the shot. Now after we've done some warming we can punch it. Now <laughs> when I talked about some of the sliders being hard to understand exactly what they're doing I was really referring to punch it in the way that it sort of makes sense to begin with in that we are moving the slider and it's kind of in increasing the contrast so by that the shadows are getting darker and the the lights the highlights are getting whiter but when we punch it all the way it then starts to turn into black and white and that's you know one of the strange things that the punch it slider does so punch it but not too much in fact I'm gonna you know not reverse punch it but because if, if you basically if you reverse punch it then uh, I, I don't know what that is um, uh, I want to say a sucker punch but obviously that's completely not what a sucker punch is but you understand where I'm going with that verbally perhaps if you bring it back the other way then you turn it into kind of a flat image and all your shadows are lost so you know punch it within reason after that we can bleach it, which is basically a saturation tool. Again, like the warm it slider, if you go the opposite way, uh, if you go to the left rather than to the right, then what you're going to do is you're going to actually add colour, so you're going to do the opposite of bleaching it. But if we do slide it forward, then we can eventually turn it into a black and white image. This is basically a, a saturation tool. Then we've got skin colour. Now the problem with the skin colour plugins and it's the same with the Cosmo plugin is that the isolation tools quite simply aren't good enough in Final Cut alone you're going to need a third party plugin that helps you isolate different sections of footage or use them in a platform like Adobe After Effects where you can use masks and such to really uh, section out particular areas just because it's basically looking for skin colors and in a shot like this 
where the face is slightly blue or the face is actually going to match with the brick walls if we change the color correction differently we're not actually going to get the kind of control that we want you can see we can play around with the skin color and stuff but really it's affecting everything you can see that we're changing the color of the brick wall behind him and we're also changing his face so unless you have a tool that's going to let you isolate this character as well um, like a pen tool which you can get a plug-in for in Final Cut then the actual skin tools are slightly less use useful by themselves then we've got a couple more skin tools but I'm not going to go into them for the same reason perhaps we can take a look at Magic Bullet Mojo inside of Adobe After Effects in the near future if you'd like to see that video please leave a comment in the description requesting it and then finally we have a blend with original where we if we slide it all the way up to 100 then it's basically going to turn Mojo off and then we've got a mix slider as well which kind of does the same thing I'm not sure exactly what the difference between using each one is basically the mix or blend with original is basically dimming the opacity of the Mojo plugin so if we take it all the way up to 100 we reset the footage as if Mojo wasn't on there at all you can see if we toggle this button here which turns the effect on and off it now makes no difference okay now Mojo's on if we now bring the mix down and then turn Mojo on and off you can you get my point they basically do the same thing so either use the mix slider or the blend with original I don't think it really matters but you can see that very quickly in a very short space of time I don't know how much time because I cut and edit these videos so however long it's been for you we have created a quite intense but high contrast film look for our video now it's got it's really important if you look at the commercial for Mojo then you're gonna see how amazing the uh, results are and what you need to bear in mind is that I believe Shakespeare once said you can't polish a turd and if your footage isn't good enough and you don't have a dynamic enough shot then all it's really gonna look like you're doing is adding lots of color and increasing the contrast but if your footage is good then Mojo is gonna be a super useful tool to very quickly create very exciting color grades for your shots so hopefully this is useful thanks for watching there's going to be a couple more on these magic bullet suite applications let me know if you're enjoying them let me know any other tutorials you want feel free to request them and if you have any final cut pro questions feel free to drop me a message through my website which is danalanfilms.com thank you and i'll see you guys soon